However, today's ravishing topic is how does the upcoming Chinese supercarrier compare? So please like and subscribe to our channel for future updates. First of all, let us discuss the present careers in China. China's first aircraft carrier, Lioning, Type 001, entered service in 2012. China's second aircraft carrier, and its first fully indigenously built carrier, Shandong Type 001A, entered service on December 17, 2019. China's third carrier, Type 002, is under construction. China's fourth carrier reportedly also to be built to the Type 002 design may begin construction as soon as possible. The Type 002 carriers like Liaoning and Shandong are to be conventionally powered. Observers have speculated that China may eventually field a force of four to six, or possibly more than six, aircraft carriers. In late November 2019, it was reported that the Chinese government, while deciding to proceed with the construction of the fourth carrier, has put on hold plans to build a fifth carrier known as the Type 003 which was to be nuclear-powered due to budgetary and technical considerations. Observers expect that it will be some time before China masters carrier-based aircraft operations on a substantial scale. Lioning Type 001 Lioning is a refurbished ex-Ukrainian aircraft carrier that China purchased from Ukraine in 1998 as an unfinished ship. It is conventionally powered has an estimated full load displacement of 60,000 to 66,000 tons and reportedly can accommodate an air wing of 30 or more fixed wings, airplanes and helicopters including 24 fighters. The Lioning lacks aircraft catapults and instead launches fixed wing airplanes off the ship's bow using an inclined ski ramp. By comparison, US Navy aircraft carriers are nuclear powered have a full load displacement of about 100,000 tons, can accommodate air wings of 60 or more aircraft, including fixed-wing aircraft and some helicopters, and launch their fixed-wing aircraft over both their bows and their angled decks using catapults, which can give those aircrafts a range payload capability greater than that of aircraft launched with a ski ramp. The Lioning, like US Navy aircraft carriers, lands fixed-wing aircraft using arresting wires on its angled deck. Some observers have referred to the Liaoning as China's starter career. China has been using Liaoning in part for pilot training. Shandong Type 001A Shandong is a modified version of the Liaoning design that incorporates some design improvements including features that reportedly will permit it to embark and operate a larger wing of 40 aircraft that includes 36 fighters, Its displacement is estimated at 66,000 to 70,000 tons. Type 002 Careers The Type 002 Career has a displacement of 80,000 tons to 85,000 tons and that it will be equipped with electromagnetic catapults rather than a ski ramp, which will improve the range payload capability of the fixed-wing aircraft that it operates. Type 003 Carrier China was to begin building a Type 003 carrier design that would displace 90,000 to 100,000 tons and, in addition to being equipped with electromagnetic catapults, be nuclear powered, the Chinese government had put on hold plans to build this Type 003 design. China's third aircraft carrier will be considerably larger than its predecessors, the Liaoning and Shandong, which each measures 304.5 meters in length. Earlier assertments of the Type 003 by CSIS estimated its waterline dimensions at roughly 300 meters in length and 40 meters in width. As the flight deck has taken shape, the vessel's overall length has increased to approximately 315 meters, and its width at the widest point has expanded to 74 meters. Carrier-based aircraft China's primary career-based fighter aircraft is the J-15 or Flying Shark, an aircraft derived from the Russian Su-33 flanker aircraft design that can operate from carriers equipped with a ski ramp rather than catapults. China reportedly plans to develop a career-capable variant of its J-20 fifth generation stealth fighter and or a career-capable variant of its FC-31 fifth generation stealth fighter to complement or succeed the J-15 on catapult-equipped Chinese carriers. China reportedly is also developing a carrier-based stealth drone aircraft. 
Why does China need these carriers? Are they dangerous for other countries in the world? Many observers believe that China is acquiring carriers primarily for their value in other kinds of operations, and to demonstrate China's status as a leading regional power and major world power. Chinese aircraft carriers could be used for power projection operations, particularly in scenarios that do not involve opposing U.S. forces, and to impress or to intimidate foreign observers. Chinese aircraft carriers could be used for humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations, maritime security operations, and non-combatant evacuation operations (NEOs). Politically, aircraft carriers could be particularly valuable to China. For projecting an image of China as a major world power, because aircraft carriers are viewed by many as symbol of major world power status. In a combat situation involving opposing U.S. naval and air forces, Chinese aircraft carriers would be highly vulnerable to attack by U.S. ships and aircraft. By conducting such attacks, could divert U.S. ships and aircraft from performing other missions in a conflict situation with China. Shandong versus Liaoning. The island of the Shandong is approximately 10% smaller than that of the Liaoning, which provides additional deck space. It displaces roughly 66,000 to 70,000 tons, a few thousand tons more than the Liaoning. It features the advanced Type 346 S-band AES air radar system. Its air wing is expected to be slightly larger than that of the Liaoning, featuring around eight additional aircraft. The Shandong may have an internal arrangement that is better optimized than that of the Liaoning. The Shandong is limited to six days at sea before refueling, which is similar to the Liaoning. China's new super carrier, how it compares to the U.S. Navy's Ford class and other carriers in the world. A new aircraft carrier, currently under construction in Shanghai, is the most visible sign of China's rapidly expanding navy. It is larger than China's current two carriers and differs in key aspects. But the natural comparison is to the U.S. Navy's latest carriers, the Ford class. The Chinese Navy plan has already commissioned two carriers based on the Russian Admiral Kudzenov class, but their third carrier, known as the Type 003, promises to take the plan to the next level. Meanwhile, the U.S. Navy, for decades the world leader in this technology, is also modernizing with a new class of supercarrier, the first Ford class ship. USS Gerald R. Ford CVN-78 was commissioned in 2017. While it has suffered some teething problems, it remains the largest and most modern carrier afloat. The Type 003 is very close in size to the U.S. Navy's carriers, and although the definition is vague, it seems fair to also describe it as a supercarrier. It is approximately 320 meters long. This is just about 30 meters shorter than the Ford class, and it seems less than it sounds if you place the two ships side by side. The Chinese ship does have a narrower flight deck. However, its width of about 73 meters is very similar to preceding Type 001 and Type 002 carriers. There may be logistical reasons for this, such as dry dock sizes, or it may simply be that the Chinese planners were happy with the width of the current carriers. The Type 003 has three catapults, with two on the bow and one in a waist position. This is one fewer than the Ford class, which, like earlier American carriers with steam catapults, also has four. Such a move would put China on an elite footing with the United States and France, the only two countries that currently possess nuclear-powered carriers. In our channel, we mainly discuss China's important issues related to their politics, education, currency, military, and lifestyle. We also compare China with the rest of the countries in the world in every parameter. If you liked our video and want to hear from us again, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.